Hi, God bless, and welcome everyone here to Talk Straight Bible. This is Elsie Valentine with you all here in this day. As always, giving God all the glory, the honor, and all the exaltation. And this morning, I'm here to do one thing, and that's to speak the truth and nothing but the truth of the Word of God. And give Him all the glory, the honor, and praise because He alone deserves it. In this morning, I'm going to read from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. And the word of God says, Therefore, I take pleasure in affirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in prosecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. I last week spoke on the same chapter, chapter 12 of uh, 2 Corinthians. And I spoke from verses 7 to 9. And I said, I'm going to come back next week with a part 2, with a part 2. So here I am with a part 2 of what I didn't get to finish last week. Um, Because for the whole month of November, the Lord had been ministering to me about the thorn that was in the flesh of Paul. And we too also have thorns in our flesh it could be what Paul describes here. It could be a sickness, an illness, financial burden. It can be anything. And sometimes you're like, Lord, <laughs> until when? But I just love how Paul writes and what he teaches us in the writings and how we are to just seek God even in the midst of whatever we're going through. So if you're going through something in this morning and you've received a bad report from the doctor, you receive bad news, just seek the Lord. Seek Him in your weakness. Seek Him in your quiet time, in your private time. Just seek the Lord and He will answer you. He's faithful. He's just to answer you. So last week's message I had entitled it Affliction of the Thorn, but this week I kind of reversed it. I entitled it Thorns of Affliction because when you read here, Paul talks about the infirm- infirmities, the reproaches, the needs, prosecutions, and in being in distress. See? So I wanted to talk about one of them today, and that is the infirmities, which When you read and you study that word, it talks about illness, a sickness, some sort of mental health. So I want to encourage you, if you haven't heard last week's message, just go back and listen to it. And always listen to the messages that are played here on Talk Straight Bible because they're really good. And they edify and they lift you up. They build you up and the studies and how deep. Every minister here goes into the word. Sometimes I sit back and I'm like, oh my goodness, it's so good. It's so good. But most importantly, go back and read the Bible because the Bible will give you even a greater understanding of what we're talking about here as well. It's always good to read the Bible. It's edifying. It's food for your soul. Amen. But I want to begin by reading what one commentator wrote concerning these verses here in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse uh, 10. He wrote that Paul has turned boasting upside down. It's not that he doesn't care if others think he's weak. It's that he truly is weak and he wants everyone to know it for the sake of Christ. He is content, even with all sorts of trials and suffering. He has made peace with the fact that such weakness in his life is exactly what is needed. It is what pulls Paul's earthly self aside, leaving room for Christ's strength to accomplish what God has called Paul to do. I like how this commentator wrote in the beginning how Paul has turned boasting upside down you ever heard that term in the word world uh turn your frown upside down (laughs) because you pull many muscles when you frown so when you smell is something beautiful that others want to see so paul took boasting and he turned it upside down because boasting is being excessively proud it's making it all about you it's all about me it's all about i what i did what you did i i i which is ultimately pride and paul understood that in his boasting it could have devalued and belittled the manifestation of the power of god working through him in second corinthians chapter 10 verse 17 it says let the one who boasts 
boast in the Lord. And I read the um, ESV version because I just like the way they worded it. We should boast in God. You know, we were we weren't created to worship ourselves. We weren't created to worship one another, even though we're seeing that a lot in today's way of living, how people are transforming their bodies because they're worshiping themselves because they want to look a certain way or they're worshiping all these uh, famous people, idols and images and goddesses and all these things that are not godly. But King David wrote in Psalms 29 verse 2, Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. When you can easily boast in God in your weakness, as Paul says, in pleasures, in your pleasure, in your infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in prosecution, in distress. You will understand the mind of Paul, how this man wrote, so many books of the Bible in his weaknesses, in his sufferings, in his hardships. When he was bound in chains, he still wrote many letters to the church to encourage them to keep the faith. The affliction that Paul and the thorns that Paul had in his flesh. What I love, it didn't stop Paul from doing the work of God or for allowing God from working in him. When you look at today's way of living... There's all these mega churches and they have dark altars with neon lights and there's big screens everywhere. You know, Paul didn't have any of these things. He didn't even have a structural building to preach in. He didn't have social media like we have today. But in today's modern church, it's so spoiled by these things. And yet many don't use it in the proper way. And yet this man, Paul, who didn't have any of these things, he wrote 13 epistles. He spread the teachings of Jesus Christ on all these missionary journeys that he went on. Even in his pain, in his affliction, the man was able to write about Ephesians 6 and the full armor. While he watched the Roman soldiers gear up, he was able to take it and look at it in a spiritual way and take the helmet and tell us that we are to put the helmet of salvation each and every day. We are to pray that over ourselves, over our minds and the, the garments, the gospel of the sandals of peace. This man, he saw so many things, but yet it didn't stop him from doing the work of God. You know, it's nice to boast when we have earthly possessions, when we tell others, hey, God gave me a new car or God gave me a new house. God gave me this and that. But it's one thing to boast in the moment of your weakness, when you're sick, when prosecution has come over you, when you're confronting something you've never confronted in your life. That is the biggest testimony of humility to others to show them who Christ is in you. You know, I rejoice in this past year that my mom, as you all heard the testimony of her experiencing a moment in her life where we receive such bad news about cancer. But one of the things that really, really stood out to me the most, and I give God so much glory and honor, is that in her weakness, God was made perfect in her. In her weakness, she sought the Lord and she rejoiced. In her weakness, she understood the power of her praise. Not to praise the doctors, not to praise herself or anyone who was praying for her, but to give God the glory and the praise. And one of the sisters in my church had a vision. And in the vision, the Lord gave her this scripture and she was praying it over my mom. And I said, my God, how powerful the word of God is, is in Psalms 118, 17. It says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Because in your infirmities, in your weakness, in your sicknesses, you are to praise him. You are to declare life and not death. You are to declare the works of the Lord in you. And I love because the sister revealed this to me recently. She didn't tell me when the Lord gave it to her because she would have been boasting in herself. But she quietly took that verse and prayed it over and over the situation. And I thank God that to, to this day, 
the doctors have told us that that cancerous tumor has shrunk because that is the work of Christ in you. When you're going through something and yet you're quiet because you're trusting in the Lord. In your infirmities, Christ has paid the ultimate price. Isaiah 53 verses 4 to 5 says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. In Paul's infirmities, he was dealing with some sort of sickness, illness, disease. And many studies say it could have been something with his eyes. Because on that road of Damascus, Paul had a glorious encounter with our Lord and Savior, which converted him and changed him and transformed him for the good. Whatever the infirmity this man had, it made him weak, but yet he found himself to be strong in the Lord. This man, he was once bound, now he's free because of that amazing grace of our Lord and Savior. I love the song, Amazing Grace. I love every word of it, every part of it. A wrench like me. I love everything about that song because in your weakness, God is made perfect. In your weakness, you will see the mighty hand of God move upon your situation, any sickness, anything you're going through. That's why I love the teachings and the writings of Paul. Because this man endured so much, but yet it didn't stop him from talking to others about who Christ is. If God has called you to be a vessel, just like here on Talk Straight Bible... I am just a vessel that God is using. I am just obedient. I could have said no, but I'm here because God has called me to speak to many of who he is. Yes, we go through trials. We go through tribulations. We go through sufferings. We have a thorn in our flesh. (laughs) And at times we say, Lord, please take this from me. But it's in that moment where God is working through you so others can come to Christ. So if God is calling you and you're saying, Lord, I'm going through this, give it to God. Let him deal with it and do the work that God has called you to do. I don't know who this is for, but I pray that the Lord works in your heart. And don't forget, don't forget where God has taken you out of and where he has placed you today. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. And until we meet again, Shalom.